Hi everyone, it's Sam from SiteMate. In this video, we're going to cover off some of the more advanced aspects of incorporating conditional logic into our form templates in Dash Pivot. Uh, there's two things we're going to cover. The first is triggering additional fields to appear based off the values selected in a list field. And the second is just covering some of the more important things that we need to understand if we're going to be using conditional logic in templates that are set up as a workflow, uh, just like this one where those additional fields that are triggered are then marked as required. So let's jump in, uh, let's edit this template. It's already got uh, both of these incorporated uh, into it. So we're just going to review how it's been set up. Um, in the last video, you'll recall that we built some logic based off a yes, no field. Uh, you can see that it's got the logic icon next to it. The list field also has the logic icon next to it, and that's because we can build some uh, conditional logic based off the list field as well. Um, so it's quite different uh, in that with the yes, no field, you're only ever gonna have two or three values. You've got yes, no, and not applicable. With the list field, it's much more flexible. Uh, you could have 100 values uh, or hundreds of values in a list, and in theory, each of those values could have its own set of uh, logic uh, built, uh, built off them. Uh, so in other words, if you've got a list that has 10 items, um, you might have, uh, if, the, if the first item is selected, then show these fields. If the second item is selected, show these fields. If the third item, these fields, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but before you go ahead and do that, uh, there is something that's quite useful to understand you can see here that we've got a list field uh, that says proposed solution and we've manually typed in three list items so there's three options that we could theoretically choose and we've actually set it up so that we're going to display the same field if either of these last two options are selected uh, which makes sense so in this case it's a non-conformance report uh, if we're accepting the non-conformance in place then there's no need to put down an estimate of the cost of repairs, but if we're going to do some repairs or completely remove it, uh, we, we are going to want to specify you know, the estimated cost. Now, you know, one way of setting this up would be to have two of these logic blocks, one where we've got uh, some logic based off of selecting the repair and rework uh, value, uh, and the other could be based off the completely remove value, and you can see that the same field is uh, is shown, but this is not very efficient. This is not uh, the way that you're going to want to set up your template. There is a much simpler way of doing this, which is to select multiple values in this logic block and remove the second one. So if we specify that if the value equals repair and rework or completely remove, then we're going to show this field. Um, which means that we don't actually need that second block of logic and we've just uh, made our, our form much simpler to read and understand. So let's take a look at how this works in practice. So let's save this template and go ahead and add a new form. And if we scroll down, we can see that the proposed solution, we've got those three options. If we select accept in place, nothing happens. But if we select repair and rework, we get the estimated cost of repairs field show up, which is also set as required. Uh, and the same thing happens if we select completely remove. The same question shows up. So uh, this is what we wanted. Uh, but you'll notice, and this is leading into the second item that I wanted to cover in this video, which is that if we click the save button, even though these fields are set to be required, if we click save, we can actually still save the form. Um, and to understand this, uh, because at first it might be quite puzzling, to understand this, we need to understand how the required fields work when it comes to workflows, uh, because it's kind of different um, to our templates that are set up as a timeline. With workflows, uh, the way that we actually move the form between the different columns in the workflow is based off what we call approval signatures. So you can see this one has several approval signatures. They need to be signed off in sequence, which is why the last two are disabled, but the first one isn't. But you'll see that if we try and click sign, it tells us that we need to complete the required fields first. So in essence, we just need to fill out all the required fields in order to get to the next approval signature. 
um, because um, ultimately with the workflow, we want to move our form from the column in the far left to the column in the far right. We're not going to be able to get it all the way through unless all of the required fields have been filled out. And the way that the logic works for the workflows is um, the uh, requirement to fill out the fields is staged uh, as per the next approval signature. So all it means is that we just need to fill this out And once we've filled out all of the required fields above the next approval signature, we can sign it. And if we click save, you can see that it's now moved across. So just something we need to be aware of if we're going to be using conditional logic inside of our workflow templates where those additional fields are marked as required. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about other features and functionality inside Dash Pivot, just head to the tutorial section. Um, it's also got uh, videos covering off the different use cases, including uh, some of the use cases where we could use uh, conditional logic and incorporate that into our uh, form templates. Uh, but if you get stuck or have specific questions, uh, you can always reach our live chat team via the live chat button in the bottom right hand corner on the website. Uh, and it's also available in the app. So that's it for this video and thanks for watching.